picture. Oh, she's burning right at Pictures on Facebook don't always look like the same person. So I was like, it looks like her, but I just better make sure. The old the regular meeting Tuesday July 18 2017 6 30 p.m. Civic Center 115 South 4th Street Bill will you lead us in prayer please Stand. <laughs> Heavenly Father sweet this evening we ask that you give us the wisdom and the courage to make the decisions in our best interest of our citizens and our city we ask that you watch over our first responders all military personnel, wherever they may be. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call, please. Jeff Hebb. Diggin. Here. Goodner. Here. Scott. Here. Clayton. Here. I do want to say Christy Jeffcoat is uh, not present tonight because her stepfather passed away yesterday from a short battle with cancer. And so she's with her family at the moment. So any thoughts and prayers you could send her way, I'm sure she would greatly appreciate it. Item number one, discuss and act on approval of consent agenda. A, financial reports for June 2017. B, minutes of meeting held in June 2017. C, claims for the month of June 2017. And B, budget amendment number 16 for fiscal year 2016-2017. Make a motion we approve. Second. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Do again. Yes. Yeah. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number two, discuss and act on approval of payment to AEP PSO in the amount of $19,821.40. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Dugan. Yes. Gunner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number three, discuss and act on approval of payment to Fuel Man in the amount of $6,968.10. Thank you, motion to approve. Second. Call, please. Dugan. Yes. Dugan. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Item number four. Discuss and act on approval of payment to American Exchange Bank in the amount of $12,058.79 for the least, least purchase payments ladder truck, GMP fire truck, backhoe, and six-wheel dump truck. Make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Dugan. Yes. Gunner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Item number five. Discuss and act on approval of payment to emergency medical services in the amount of seven thousand three hundred four dollars and four cents. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Do again. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Item number six. 
Discuss and act on approval of payment to Henriette Economic Development Authority in the amount of $8,303.21. Make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Dugan? Yes. Goodner? Yes. Scott? Yes. Clayton? Yes. Item number seven. Discuss and act on approval of payment to Bank of Oklahoma in the amount of $31,073.37 for the 2014 series utility system and sales tax revenue no monthly payment. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call please. Dugan. Yeah. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Tyson. Yes. Item number eight. Discuss and act on approval of payment to Bank of Oklahoma in the amount of $19,708.83 for the 2015 note series monthly payment. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call please. Dugan. Yeah. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Place. Yes. Item number nine. Discuss and act on approval of payment of invoice number 515203 to Hall Estill in the amount of $46,288.66 for professional services rendered on Melberger Brawley. The water plant. So the 42 plus the 3,000, this 46, that's this month. Yeah, it's within the last month. Okay. I make a motion that we move this down the agenda to act on it after we come out of executive session. I don't need a motion to move it. I'll just move it down there. Okay. okay so we're moving number nine to. Twenty-five uh, A. Twenty-five A. Well, yes. Yeah. Okay. Item ten: Discuss and act on approval of payment to Will High Construction in the amount of seventeen thousand three hundred seventy-six dollars and fifty cents per garage and office at Cemetery. We already took bids on this, did it. The work's completed, so now he needs pay. I've been out there and looked at it. Make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Do again. Yes. Good there. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Item 11. Discuss and act on approval of payment of invoice number 10663 to Crawford Associates PC in the amount of $7,495 for professional services rendered. This was the end of the year paperwork that they're required to do to close out the year that increase our bill to them. Make a motion to approve. Second. I'll second. <laughs> Roll call, please. Yes. Good there. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Item number twelve. Discuss and act on approval of payment payment of invoice number 0169-293547 to O'Reilly in the amount of six thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars for the wheel balance and tire changer. This is something that we discussed when we were doing budgets for Derek to get, so then we weren't outsourcing every tire to be changed, rotated, and done. So this is mm -hmm. what we agreed to in the budget. This is just getting approval to pay for it. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Dugan. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number 13, discuss and act on approval to purchase fabricated fishing pier from Beaver Docks in the amount of $11,300 for Nichols Park to be reimbursed in full by Union Sportsman Alliance. Not only do they plan to reimburse us for it, they plan to come install it completely to remove the old one and put it in. They're planning on putting all new grills at Nichols Park free of charge. They're planning on putting in new picnic tables to an extent. Linda Gerster and Josh Craig have been instrumental in getting this going, and I appreciate them very much and helping do this. Vernon Britt did have some dealings with them as well to get this going at Nichols Park, but this is to the old dock where you first come in, the wooden one that's falling apart. They're going to entirely remove that and put a brand new one in. It's been a while coming. Welcome. Welcome news, isn't it? Make a motion we approve. Second. Roll call, please. Do again. Good there. Yes. Scott. Yes. Place. Yes. Item 14. Discuss and act on allowing Megan Bird to use the gazebo area for local vendors to set up and sell items. 
is tabled June 20th, 2017 meeting. Megan is here. If you would step up to the microphone, please, and you can explain what you're wanting to do. Hi. Hello. Um, my plan with Small Business Saturday or Small Business Showcase is to allow small businesses in Okmulgee County to come together and showcase what they offer. Like if they don't have a storefront, you know, they work solely out of their home, they can um, allow people to come together and see what they offer. I own an online boutique and it is hard to get online business, especially business in Henrietta. Not everyone's on the internet. So I figured this would be a great way for the community to come together and see what um, businesses in Henrietta have to offer. I have um, kind of like a little detailed thing in an application if any of y'all would like to look at it. I've got copies of it. I have a couple of questions. Go ahead. Um, taxes, will you charge tax on your items and that tax will go back to the sales? Um, How does that work? I've been kind of working on that because I know some of them, um, like some vendor events, the vendor booth is responsible for their own taxes. They turn all that in. I'm still gonna, I'm still researching to try to figure out if I need to um, get a list of all of them and their tax ID numbers and then send that in, or if I'll need to collect taxes that they've made. I'm just they thinking, should be responsible for it personally. Like if yeah. you do Tupperware, or if you do Avon, mm -hmm. or if you do Cincy, yeah. you have to collect the taxes. Okay, okay. Well, but I just don't think it's right that we let a business go down there and, and sell but we wouldn't let Brad's furniture go down there and sit without well, paying their we can, I was thinking storefronts, too, can come anybody out as that well. Wants to come. Yeah, anybody that wants to come in Old Mulgee County. So what's keeping so. the garage sale from coming down there? There'll be an application process. Can I sell my boat down there? <laughs> <laughs> There'll be an application process. Okay. And, um, like, with the direct sales, there will only be, like, one Mary Kay, one Avon, and then, like, say there's Burnett's, or there's um, like photography business or food businesses that just want to get their word out about their business, they can come and set up. There won't, won't be any like garage selling or um, like just. Um, and will you be the point person for that? Yes. She said she's willing to take on the full responsibility, yeah. is what she did. And I'll run advertising on Facebook, all of it. And she only wanted to do it one time to just see to how see it works how it out. Goes. And then if it doesn't go well or if there's any glitches, then, you know, it would, she would obviously not want to do it again. We had first talked about Nichols Park or different places, but then somebody had mentioned to her the gazebo area may be a good open area closer to town. And there's other places that do it, and that's how you have got some of these contracts and different things that... So it'd be kind of like a right. big affair of the heart. Kind of. kind of. But just, you know, strictly for businesses in Oklahoma County. For yeah. <laughs> so would you want a license for like 30 days and then if it works out great we'd renew it and if not would it just go away she just wants like to do a one-time like weekend event oh, yeah, it'll, be, just, it'll be like a saturday maybe like early morning i want to do it probably more towards the middle of september so this way it's not so hot and people aren't out there you know Sweating and being exhausted by the time it's over. So, like mid morning, possibly just one day, just to see how it goes. So, like the second Saturday in September or something, second or third Saturday. Yeah. You made it like like a fair of the heart. Just use mm -hmm. an example. And y'all that don't know, a fair of the heart's a big sale. They have tall yeah. It's huge. And why can't she use this? Well, she wanted it visible and out and about. Because you know, there's some people that want stuff to do. I mean, I, I, if you wanted to use the Civic Center, I guess we could, but you had mentioned to me that you thought it would be visible to people and people could come and go. Yeah, because I want to make it kind of like a family event thing, you know, maybe because I know there's a couple places that do rent out bounce houses. I was thinking maybe we could possibly have one of them set up to show what they have to, to offer. To show what they have to offer, mm -hmm. you know, hand out pamphlets with their prices and things well, you, like you'd that. You'd get in some fees if you used the Civic Center, too. Oh, okay. Well, unless we waived it, I think that's what Jana was saying. If we wanted to waive the fees for her to be able to use that. I don't know if we want to start waiving fees. But I think it sounds like a reasonable thing for trying to do. I make a motion we approve. I second motion. Roll call, please. Dugan. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Fife. Yes. 
Okay, just let can us we know when you'd like that to do a little it. bit so it's just a one time thing and we, we can well, is it? I'm sorry, I don't know if you like. <laughs> well, I think we've spelled that out enough. Do you want to amend your motion? No, no, I mean, she, she's going to do it to one time. I, I understood it. You're going to do it once, and if it's if it works out, you'll continue. Right. Otherwise, that'll be the only time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Item 15. Discuss an act. Thank you, Megan. Discuss an act to reappoint Jill Francis as trustee of the Henry and Economic Development Authority to serve another five-year term from July 1st, 2017, to July 1st, 2022. Make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Duggan. Yeah. Goodner. Yes. Scott. <coughs> yes. Clayton. Yes. Item 16, discuss an act on approving HEDA providing $64,000 in financial support to the Henrietta Hospital Authority for a Physician Manpower Training Commission, PMTC, incentive action that will secure an additional full-time primary care physician to serve on the medical staff at Henrietta Hillcrest. I see there's three HEDA members here. Anybody care to elaborate on this? Since I know about it because I sit on the trust, but the hospital authority board. It's over four years. It's a reimbursement. If the physician does not come here and perform and, and fulfill their duties, then there will be no monies paid. If a physician does come here and stays one year, fulfills his duty, there's about $20,000 that first year. The second year is a little more, third year. I uh, personally got some kickback about this that I'm going to voice, and maybe you know something more that I don't that the money they make goes to Hillcrest and he would be contracted through Hillcrest. Correct. So he will be a Tulsa physician. So if Hillcrest didn't renew their contract with Henrietta, Correct. then and we paid two years in, he can still walk away. Yes, he can walk away at any time, but we wouldn't know any, any money when he, if, if and when he walks away. The incentive is to get them in Henrietta, to live in the Henrietta and to be a doctor in the Henrietta area and to see patients from this area. Does he have to live here? Because I know that only one out there does. Yeah, that's what I was saying. They don't have to live in the community, but they have to uh, provide. The, we feel pretty strongly that this one will, whether or not he lives within the city limits, because he enjoys farm life. So we're, oh, yeah, they did tell me that. You know, we're picturing him living near. The area. I have some concern. I think it's a obviously. Uh, medical treatment and access to physicians and everything is very important from an economic development standpoint. That's one of the things businesses are going to look at if they want to come here. But are, are, are we getting, are we setting a bit of a dangerous precedent that uh, that uh, in the future, are we going to, you think we're going to have to pay $64,000 every time we get a doctor to come here? Uh, that, potentially, but not necessarily. But that would be but, cheap if we did, Bill. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's less, than 40, not less than twenty thousand a year, and the hospital itself will spend more but than that recruiting a physician to come here. But, but if reason. the money's going to Tulsa, what economic development does it have to Henrietta? You have a physician that is seeing patients here. I get that. I'm I'm saying what I've been asked. Okay. Because I want it all okay, it is, video. It's a matching fund. It's one hundred and sixty thousand dollars altogether. We're not paying. And I know we need a physician. I'm just repeating what multiple questions I've been asked, Bill's been asked questions. Yeah, what do you and care? so why why isn't the hospital authority covering it was the first question. It because why be would one trust? locally raised funds. The hospital cannot, although they could, but it wouldn't be locally raised funds, and then it wouldn't get federally matched uh, grant money. The hospital authority couldn't match? Yes, the hospital authority could. Yes, okay. and has in the past. Right, yes. we did with Dr. Herb. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I know on the hospital authority's defense side of that, we are in the process of doing an emergency room, Correct. ED, whatever you want to call it, remodel that's going to be around $3 million. Those so with that committed. said, those funds are committed, and so that would deplete everything. Basically, I mean, we have rent coming in and things like that, so it's not going to totally deplete it but it would deplete what the hospital authority has if an emergency would arise, is why it was brought to HEDA. That's Correct. my understanding. Correct. Yeah. And what it's used for is to pay off the guy's student loans. And so he has to show that he paid, if we pay 19,000 to him after the end of the first year, he has to show that he paid that on his student loan. That's, 
that's the incentive to get him to come to a rural area. How is that broken down? Like roughly 20,000 the first year? It's and a little, little less. It's a little less so a little than less 20 for, the first year, and then it goes up a couple thousand the next, and a couple thousand. And it, and it. So it, the, the balloon it, payoff is at the end, I'm assuming. Well, there's there's four years of set dollar amounts, a maximum. We only have a maximum dollar amount set, and then the federal matches it a bigger amount than what we've put up. But it's only if, first of all, the, the doctor has to have that much debt, which 160000 is more than likely going to have that much debt. Then he has to repay it the year he works here, physically in Henrietta working, he has to pay that first year of about 18000 And then every year it goes up a little bit more. So it's kind of an incentive to stay longer, to get embedded in the community. And then to How will it develop the economic Doctors in our area are very important. Well, it's the community. It's important to the community, but how? If we're, if it's for, if we're head is getting involved, how does it develop in the economic uh, growth of the community? I mean, I'm not saying that it doesn't. I'm just saying it's just providing that. a need in the community to attract other people to come here and live and spend their tax dollars. Just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, on the payoff again, it, it, would it be possible? To say we got sixty four thousand and we're going to pay it over five years, could could you set it up to where it was it was back loaded? That'd be even more incentive for a person to stay all five years where we pay off it like is. half it of it. That way. Oh, it's is back loaded. He has to be here the full year and pay the money and put in his submit his proof of that, and then we'll pay that first year. Then he has to stay a full second year, pay his loan payments, submit the the proof that he's paid and then we'll pay that second year but it starts out low and goes yes, higher it starts to out low incentive to stay. okay yeah that's what it was asking. starts out low and gets higher yeah. well, and and everything that we put in gets matched more than 100 percent. so if we put in 18 that first year the federal government matches more than 18,000 that first year it is had a voted on it yes had approved it yes oh. I'll make a motion that we approve it. A second. Roll call, please. Do again. I'm going to abstain just because I, I do work for that. Good here. Yes. Scott. Yes. Spicen. Well, I want to vote yes, but my dilemma is if Janet's going to abstain and I abstain because I'm on the authority board, then it's oh, not going to okay. pass. Okay. So. <clears throat> Well, I think it should pass, and I don't think there's any concern of you working for the hospital. I think there's more, well, I don't think there's concern either way. You actually. think I can vote on it? Uh, I you just, can abstain. I'll vote yes. Because <clears throat> it's coming out of head of trust. It's not coming out of hospital authority trust, which we control both anyway. We just sit on that board. Yeah. My only concern of the whole thing was that it, 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 wor it worries me to set a precedent that we have to pay people to come here to work, and I hope that doesn't in the future, maybe the city will get to the point where well, doctors will want to come in the future. They've been doing that since day one, Bill. Yeah, they've done well, it for, for years. But yeah, I think I, in the, I, you just I've haven't known it. Vote on that, I guess. You haven't ever known it because the trust, the hospital authority board always has, but we don't have the funds to do that currently. But in the future, that's probably where it will come from once the emergency room okay. yeah, I, I is Yeah, I sat on the complete. hospital authority for eight years. I know we did it with two physicians previously. Yes, there's been multiple ones. Yeah. And that okay. was when we were on the council, actually, Bill, that the hospital okay. authority did it with two other physicians. We didn't vote on it because it went through the hospital authority. Dr. DJ and Dr. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Did you get I, all got, that? I got it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Item 17. No. That's all yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Item 17, discuss an act on HEDA reimbursing the city of Henrietta in the amount of $25,000 in support of construction of restroom facilities at Main Street Tennis Courts managed by the Henrietta Tennis Association. This has been a huge asset to, the Hen to Henrietta. You all have done an amazing job raising funds on your own. You've asked for very little from the city. I know HEDA has helped you all out a few times, but I just want to say thank you for all y'all have done and how good it looks. Thank you. Because it looks amazing. It's state-of-the-art facility. Every time you drive by, there's people there nonstop. You're one of them. You're always there. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a wonder. It's afraid to go home. 
<laughs> Make a motion we approve. Second. Roll call, please. Dagan. Yeah. Gunner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item 18. Discussion by Ron McAfee regarding statues to be placed at McCutcheon Park. Step right up. And it, and it's not of me, hopefully. It's not? It's not a cement statue of you? Actually, what we want is we just need some help. And the help we need is to move two concrete statues, about four foot high, about six blocks. And uh, I discussed this with the city, uh, and uh, they do have the equipment to do that. I guess I could just scoop it up and run it over there. But what we want to do is we want to put it on the entrance of the, of the park, and then uh, we're going to put an arch over it. And uh, we hope to have a way that people that come in can... So there are lion statues, right? Yes. And an arch. Yes because the Lions had donated the bench, and so this is yeah. something else that you are, have paid for and wanting to donate. Yes. Yeah. And you've already discussed it with Ron yeah. Casey. Ron's looked at it, and, and he says that uh, they can do it. And uh, we paid for the statues and everything. We just don't have the way to get them over there. Well, it's just a discussion, and I think between you and Ron, you can work it out and get it done, correct? Yeah, we, we could get the get them moved and in place. I mean, that's not going to be a problem. All right, he's your man. He'll take care of it for you. Thank you. Thank you. Item nineteen: discussion regarding Centa's uniform for employees. There's not really anything to discuss right now. We did figure out that we're in a contract with them. The city attorney is not here tonight. He plans to meet with Centa's to go over it because kind of a strange deal but they're willing to now give us a cut rate like you had said they would do if you know once you figure out that it's not the way it should be then they'll come back and tell you they can cut your rates and do something better so that's what they're saying now but we are in a contract with them so it may be that we have to pay that contract off to get out of it or we'll go with the cut rate at this time so that's something the city attorney wants to meet with sentence about and bring it back to us for further action there's really nothing we need to move on that currently either. <clears throat> Item number 20, discuss and act on assigning the fire department the duty to replace broken flag pole lines for business in the community. I did ask for an OMAG opinion on this. I had told yeah. you yeah. that we were going to do this previously. They said the council has the right to assign duties as they wish but when we do that, we do accept liability for the duties that they perform. Yeah, well. I mean, <clears throat> Which that's with any duty they perform. Certainly, yeah. Well, I, I really think that uh, it, it's something we should do. If a business is willing to put up a flagpole, the expense of putting up a flag, uh, and how often is this going to happen? You know, maybe uh, once, twice a year. I did and have somebody request, do you want to say an American flag? Because yeah. what if somebody calls and says, I have a Trump flag that... Well, sure, we put that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it goes, yeah, I guess it went without saying that. I, that I should say American flag. Uh, yeah, but well, it's not going to happen sure often, and, and we can encourage everybody, the businesses, perhaps every Memorial Day, you go out, check your line, you, you replace the, the line, and the fire department never has to come out that way. But if it does break, why? Well, for you know, you have a strong wind, break it, why? Uh, it's uh, climbing a ladder is, is not a big deal to a fireman. So you know, to replace those poles, and these guys will go into burning buildings if they have to. So uh, I, I don't. I, I think it's something as a, a just a service to the community, something that we should do. Well, you put it on here twice. So are you gonna make a motion? Yes, I am. I make a motion with approve <laughs> that agenda item. For an American flag? For an American flag. Second. Roll call, please. Diggin. Yeah. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Item 21. Discuss and act on approval of abatement of property owned by Milton and Louise Kilgore, located at 409 West Gentry. Jody's here. You've done all the abatement process to the get this done. Have been done. And this, is pro this property is, is the Kilgore State. And I, I, I make contact 
with anyone, everybody's passed away. Uh, the, the only person listeners is a care of Joe Russell, and he's nowhere to be found, but it doesn't matter. We've already done it. We've run the ads. We've done all the stuff we're supposed to do. The house needs to come down. Yeah. Take a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Dugan. Yep. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Tyson. Yes. Item number 22, discuss and act on city manager's report. It's been a busy month trying to get the end of the year stuff done. Donna's been going crazy trying to get everything completed, everything done. We have new swing set installed out at the uh, Nichols Park. The East Water Tower is going right along. They're moving along. Uh, they should be starting some more work on it. but. Uh, BRB is about completed with their part of it. The drying beds are about 90% done, I would say. Let me say about 90%. Uh, bridge projects. Ron, Public Works Director, has been working on bridge projects. He's got a, a basic layout, but you know, when things change, you, you never know with environment and sandblaster that they're needing and some different things that they're going to use. They're looking at starting possibly the Barclay Bridge, then Broadway. To more moving in that order at this time unless something comes up that requires them to be on it and more attention to that area um, oh, one thing I, well, I can think of it that sign down there at uh, near the skateboard park we need to add something about the swimming beach out there it's got everything but that on there to let people know that, that wrong? Okay. a sign to show that there's a beach out of the lake I'll put on there. the swimming beach yeah the other thing is, is the bathroom facility that we bought, we're looking at tapping into the current septic tank we have out there because we don't want to have to build lagoons to put out there. And so that's what he's been working on. That's why it's kind of moving a little slow. He's been working with DEQ to try to get this done and where it's going to be the best place to tap into one of the four septic tanks that we have out there. And so that's still moving along. He hasn't not been working on that him and Donna have diligently been trying to get things done and I appreciate all they do uh, the revenue from the hot trails this month was thirty four hundred and nine dollars and ten cents you know for three hundred mm. acres that sit there and it's have crazy. nothing in that crazy mm. so we have spent somewhere today was six thousand dollars and we brought in over twenty two thousand right Six thousand dollars total with dirt work and diesel and everything that's been put in out there, and we've brought in over twenty-two thousand dollars on property that's set there. That's amazing. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Well, that's another one. Sure. Yeah, and how much tax revenue we'll never know of people driving in, but you see side by sides and dirt bikes headed out Lake Road nonstop every weekend because I lived on I live on Lake Road and I can see them all day. Well, we're down a little bit on our sales tax. So I think that's due to the summer. No. Everybody across the state's down, but I'll tell you why we're down and Donna and I have discussed this many times. We had two years of construction in our area that filled our hotels up every night. That construction is now complete, so we got used to that increase. But if you look back, we're really not down, and Bruce has a map of all that. We're not really down from what we were prior to the construction taking place. We're just back to where we were. We don't really like it because it's projected revenue that we would like to have. And that's why it's important for people to buy local and stay local. But it is down, and it's been down about 30000 every month this year. Are we still doing okay on the budget, even with these numbers coming in lower, are we? Yes, right now we are, yes. We knew they were down when we projected it because we were about half through. So right now we are. But you never know where it's headed. We need to buy local and spend local. I'll make a motion that we approve the city manager's report. Second. Roll call, please. Dugan. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayson. Yes. <laughs> Item number 23, discuss and act on entering into executive session under 25 OS section 307B1 to discuss the re resignation of an FOP officer and under 25 OS section 307B4 for confidential communications with its attorney regarding a pending litigation. Make a motion to approve. Sure. Roll call, please. Digging. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Number 17 for fiscal year 2016-2017. Make a motion to approve. Second. 
Roll call, please. Dugan. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number two, discuss and act on approval of payment to Centerpoint Landfill in the amount of $12,750. Make a motion we approve. Second. Roll call, please. Dugan. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number three, discuss and act on approval of payment to OWRB 09-0029-CW in the amount of $11,193.26 for the monthly payment. Motion approved. Second. Roll call, please. Again. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number four, discuss and act on approval of purchase of caustic soda in the amount of $8,500 for the water treatment plan. Motion approved. Second. Roll call, please. Dugan. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. yes. Item number five, discuss and act on approval of purchase of ferric chloride in the amount of $7,500 for the water treatment plan. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Digging. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Yes. Item number six, discuss and act on approval of payment of invoice number 5502-8927 to Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality in the amount of $7,700. $707.64 for the annual non-industrial discharge permit. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call please. Say again. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Place. Yes. Okay, that's where we can discharge water, where we can decant it. Okay. And it's required to be, DEQ has already been down on complaints called into them five times this uh -huh. year. Uh -huh. And this is the permit that they have to give us every year to be able to do water off of the water plant, not sewer, but it's decaying water. Okay. I knew once you went up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't really I'll just put it and we'll move we'll on. Okay, item number seven, discuss and act on approval of the payment of invoice number 4084915 to Hawkins Incorporated for chlorine alarm system in the amount of $5,066.95. This is something we approved with the budget changes when we were talking about the chlorine taking over them without them being able to smell it. Second. Roll call, please. Say again. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number eight, discuss and act on approval of payment of invoice number H248625 to HD Supply for the handheld meter reading device in the amount of $6,985. That's also was already approved in the budget. Okay. Roll call, please. Digging. Yes. Gainer. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Item number nine. Discuss and act on approval of payment of invoice number B. I. One two eight five zero to Southwestern Equipment Company for grabber assembly in the amount of twelve thousand six hundred eighty nine dollars. This is the trash truck grabber arm assembly. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Digging. Yes. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Placement. Yes. Item number 10. Discuss and act on possible removal of $6 monthly utility surcharge, surcharge for the audit fee until final audit bill has been received. We have discussed this for months about what we needed to do, where we needed to go. I think we pretty much all know the audit's coming. We know that for a fact. We just don't know how much it's going to cost in the end, fifty to $75,000. And so we've had multiple people come to Bill and I requesting that the surcharge be removed. So we felt like putting it on the agenda at this time for possible removal was best for the citizens till we knew what the final bill would be. But it didn't mean that it would be removed if it did end up costing the city more money than what we had. So we could go back on it. Right. And if there's future audits. Make a motion we approve. Second. Roll call, please. Say again. Yeah. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayton. Yes. But oh, one word effective on that. that, that next yes. month. Effective, yes. Effective on the next billing cycle. The first. And they're already just, yeah, they're already on. When they get billed, they're going to, at the end of this month, it's going to be on. Okay, there. it's already done. It. It'll be the next, the next billing, billing cycle, cycle, the next available billing cycle. <clears throat> we don't want you to spend money to reprint them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Item number 11. Discuss and act on setting a council-approved amount on utility rates to be kept within budget-approved amounts with no use of meter or other services. 
Bill had requested this to be put on the agenda because he's had people come to him that don't use any water if they're gone on vacation, if they're not staying there, if they leave the state for months at a time. My concern is that we have people that don't meet minimum right now. We have EMS, we have sewer, we have all, and trash service on there. So unless they came and filled something out to say it was vacated and no services were needed would be the only way y'all would be able to know to do a minimum charge like that, right? That's what is there if somebody's broke. working on their house? There's a, if they're just working on it, if there's a water sewer only mm -hmm. that if they, um, like if they don't use any and if it's only on for like 15 days or whatever, it will prorate it also if they don't use over, like on the cut-ons for the rental property, we set those up like that. But if they're just leaving it on, like building or remodeling, there is a water sewer only that they can do. But that's still the zero to 2,000. Well, I'm wondering uh, if uh, those rates, uh, I know that's a table that's set up a usage and X number of dollars per thousand gallons or whatever. That can be modified. That's, that software company has got to be smart enough. They can modify that, that program so that can we enter, I guess my question first is, can we enter a zero usage rate or 20 gallons? Or is it rounded to 1,000 all the time? Zero to 2,000. Yeah, we rate in thousands. So it's rounded to 1,000. Uh, can we table that until Lori gets back and visit with it a little bit more? Well, I don't know that Lori's who we need to talk to. We probably need to talk to Enco. Okay. But we also need software. to research how much it costs the city to yeah. do all of these things to make well, sure we don't lose money. Well, it's, it's not about, I don't think, it's not about losing money. I, I see this, his, uh, his perception. But our budget is based on a perception of how many meters well, we I have. I know that. But if, if a person is gone for a month, and they have no usage, that means the odds are they've had no sewage or no uh, uh, trash pickup or anything else. Uh, it seems to me like a, the, a minimum of almost $50 is, is it, it verges on gouging the, the citizen. I, I think we can do better than that. But $20, or, I'm looking at my bill here, and of course we use a lot of water, but uh, the, we had a state fee of a quarter, EMS was 350, and then our surcharge, and the you know the uh, sewer and the garbage is, and the water is, is way up there, but that's fine. We're good with that. But <clears throat> if a person didn't use any water at all, and we're still hitting them for now, the sewer is is prorated on uh, the amount of water you use. I think is now, yeah. But but the uh, the garbage pickup of fifteen sixty four. You'd have to, even if we if we calculated that in, and we had those rates, we had the AMS rate in, we had the state fee of twenty five dollars, we had uh, we included the garbage fee of fifteen sixty four, and we added another ten dollars or so to it, and we're in the you know twenty five to thirty dollar range. Uh, it just seems to me there's something we can do for the citizens when they don't use any water, and, and I know that software is smart enough; that it can be adjusted to to take care of that. Even if it went over, well, if a person used less than a thousand, he shows up then really with no usage whatsoever for that month, doesn't he? So that that would be a problem. All right. We need to think this through. Right, can we table that? Because I think we need to do something with it. I'm not exactly sure what we need to try to do right now. Make a motion to table. Yeah, I make a motion we table that to the next meeting. Roll call, please. Dugan. Yeah. Goodner. Yes. Scott. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Item number 12, discuss an act on approval of payment of contractor's application number 7 to BRB in the amount of $85,410.96 for water treatment plan improvements. That's our drying beds. We will just have one more payment after this. Ron and um, Bill Myers, the engineer, are going to do a punch list in the next week or so to approve everything that's been done. But it's done. It's pretty much done. Looks great. Yeah. Very good. It's another on time, on budget. Actually, okay. they scheduled. They weren't due to complete yes, until nine seven. Yeah, that's good stuff. We go Ron, and you approve. Make a motion. We approve. Okay. Roll call, please. Dugan. Yeah. Goodner. Yes. Scott. 
Thank you. Yes. Item number 13, discuss and act on approval of payment of contractor's application number two to DN Tanks Incorporated in the amount of $117,130.43 for the million gallon water storage tank. They're moving right along too. Does this include any kind of painting or you know, we had talked at one time about it comes putting. in a color. The cement comes in a color, and the color is winter. And it, no, it's kind of a, a grayish. But it's, um, we were talking today, of, we had discussed before, Henry had unblock letters, but when they get to that point, I'm sure Ron will bring that to us as okay. to what they're going to do. But we had discussed a long time ago with Ed. Yeah. Was, yeah. It would be visible from I-40 if it just said Henry Which that would be nice. Letters. I'd like to do some of the prices of those aren't, the wraps or whatever you call them. They don't do those. It would be paint. Those, those it would be paint. I mean, the wraps were 50000 remember, and put in the cement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But they... But even the city can paint it. They can paint it. I'm sure DN Tanks does it all the time. But a lot of places where you go, you'll see like. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I just think that looks neat. Yeah, it's like being on the team, though. You know, it just like comes into our. You know, it's not for us. It's for people to travel Absolutely. Out. So, so they know where you're at. Yeah. And, and hey, they got a. Well, that's true. When you're at Arby's, it's true. But it keeps the facility. But I'd like to switch the process. Right. Keeps the water. What do you need? How about a motion for item number 13? Uh, motion to approve. Motion we don't pay that. You don't want a million gallon tank? <laughs> sure. I, I have a motion for bill. Can I get a second? Wow. <laughs> Wait, that's the one we have the big old grant on, too. Remember, we have uh, a. Yeah, that's my trick. Yeah, that's not the second. Okay. Uh, how that? about a roll call before we lose any more interest here? Dagan? <laughs> yes. Gettner? Yes. Scott? Yes. I mean, here? <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Then it's time to go, folks. It Item was, number yes, 14. Discuss and act on new business. No new business. Item number 15. Let's make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Roll call, please. Dagan? Yes. Gettner? Yes. Scott? Yes. Yes. I will probably have to call a special meeting in the next couple of weeks. As you know, just the ordinances. The ordinances were not on here because John doesn't have one. He what ordinances are you talking about? The ones with the city fines. Okay. Well, yeah. All right.